Hey everybody, I'm Father Gabriel, and today's question for our Lenten series is, why does the Bible keep using the numbers 3, 7, 12, and 40? Well, we hear these numbers even in the New Testament often because, in part, they're significant in the life of the Old Testament. Now, in the case of a couple of these numbers, there's a significance to them which, I guess, has its own kind of meaning that sometimes they'll be appealed to to bring in that meaning to whatever it is that's being talked about. But at very least, even if not for that kind of deeper meaning, there's also the association that you make with the fact, for instance, when Jesus calls the 12 apostles, that God had fulfilled the promise made to Abraham and through Isaac into the time of Jacob by the 12 sons of Jacob. Remember, Jacob's name is turned, transformed into Israel. Those 12 sons of Israel go on to become 12 tribes, the fathers of 12 tribes. And so when Jesus calls the 12 apostles, he's making a connection back to the promise, the fulfillment of the promise made to Abraham in the Old Testament, now being fulfilled in this beautiful way in the call of the 12 apostles. But let's take a step back for a moment. The number three, for instance, we think about God, <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I mean, the Trinity is the profound mystery at the heart of Christian faith. That when Jesus Christ is born into this world, he reveals in himself the relationship between himself and the Father, and the relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so in this beautiful revelation, we have three persons and one God. But all the way back in the Old Testament times, the number three is used throughout Scripture to signify a kind of perfection. And so very fittingly, it's being evoked in the time of, of uh, Jesus' self-revelation in teaching us about the nature of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The number seven signifies a kind of completeness or fullness. And in our Catholic life, we think of the sacraments, for instance. But then there's also the, the, the seven churches that are talked about in the Acts of the Apostles. There's the seven spirits, the, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And yeah, this kind of, this kind of uh, when the word, when the number itself is being evoked, evoking a sense of completeness with whatever it is that's being discussed. The number 12, as I mentioned before, signifying uh, an echo back into the Old Testament for the 12 tribes of Israel, which was, remember, Jacob's name, his 12 sons becoming the, the fathers of those 12 tribes. But then, even beyond the 12 apostles, there's even uh, the reference to the 12 loaves of the unleavened bread presented in the temple each week and so forth. I mean, there's a lot of references here. And you could say that, in a sense, when the 12 is being evoked, there's also this kind of sense in the background of a kind of fulfillment of, of the Father's providential care for um, his people, but then also this sense of authority. I mean, the 12 go out. They're commissioned by Jesus, and they go out. And so they're rooting themselves, or Jesus roots them, upon the foundations of the Old Covenant, but then he builds upon those foundations to establish the New Covenant. And the number 40 is, time and time again, we're going through the Lenten season right now, the 40 days of Lent, but Moses lived 40 years in the desert with the people of Israel. They wandered in the desert for those 40 years. When the prophets are called, like Jesus himself goes and wanders in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, Jonah preaches in Nineveh 40 days more and 
Nineveh will be destroyed. Um, and, and I just think of the, the, the prophets of the Old Covenant who spend 40 days in this kind of penitential anticipation of their own ministry as well. But as you can see, there's a, there's a whole bunch of, um, as you already know, if you're asking this question, you've heard these numbers being thrown around time and time again. And in a sense, there's, it's not just a coincidence that these numbers are being brought up because there's connections, as I said, that are being made between all of these different things, linking up these things going on in the new covenant in the time of Jesus with things that happened in the old. So anyway, I hope that was helpful and God bless you. Know that you're in our prayers. Please keep one another in prayer that in all things, God may be glorified. All right, goodbye. Thank you.